So let's look at allylic photohalogenation. So let's suppose we have the following alkene, so this is cyclopentene, and let's mix it with a bromine molecule and let's add light, our energy source. What is our final product? Well, to determine our final product, we must remember that photohalogenation has an initiation step as well as the propagation step. So let's look at our initiation step. So in our initiation step, our light, our energy source cleaves the relatively weak bromide-bromide bond. So these two electrons separate, they dissociate, forming the following two identical chain carrying radicals, the bromide radicals. So let's look at our second step, the propagation step. In the propagation step, we take one of these chain carrying radicals and we mix it with our cyclopentene, with our alkene. Now, which one of the H atoms will this bromide radical abstract? In other words, remember, bromide is very selective in which radical, which uh, H atom it takes away. Notice that this cyclopentene has three different H atoms that can potentially be abstracted. So we have this H atom, let's name it H subscript A. We have this different H atom, let's name it H subscript B. And the final one, H subscript C. Notice this is identical to this one and this is identical to this H. So we're only going to look at this H, this H, and this H because these are the distinct H atoms. So let's look at the first one. Let's look at pathway A. What happens if our chain carrying radical, the bromide radical, decides to abstract this atom, the H subscript A? Well, we get the following products. So there is a bond that forms between the bromide and HA. We form the following molecule as well as this radical, this new chain carrying radical, where we have this single electron on the carbon that has uh, a bond, that has a double bond, a pi bond. Let's look at pathway B. Now in pathway B, we have the same chain carrying radical, but now it abstracts not this H atom, but this H atom, forming once again the same bromide H atom, so the same bromide H bond, and a different chain carrying radical. Now, this uh, electron is found not on this carbon, but the adjacent carbon. And notice what we have now. Now we have resonance stabilization. In other words, we have delocalization of our single electron. If this electron combines with one of the electrons in the pi bond, we form a pi bond between this carbon and this carbon. And the other electron at pi bond remains on this carbon. So there is a delocalizing effect and this is very stabilizing. Now let's look at pathway C. In pathway C, if our bromide chain carrying radical decides to abstract the final HC, H subscript C, uh, we get the following two products. So once again, a bond is formed between the H and bromide and the last type of chain carrying radical, the product that is formed. Now notice that pathway A and pathway C, there's no delocalizing of our electron. There's no resonance stabilizing effect. In other words, this pi bond is too far to interact with this electron. Likewise, this electron is simply too close. This is the only pathway that leads to our resonance stabilized structure. So, in conclusion, bromine or bromide is very selective and will choose to abstract the hydrogen that leads to the more stable radical intermediate, namely pathway B. Pathway B has an electron that is delocalized between two different carbons, between this carbon and this carbon. So it jumps from this carbon to this carbon. Notice that the actual picture, the actual structure of this molecule is somewhere in between. It's a combination of these two Lewis dot structures. 
So to conclude, whenever we have the following uh, photohalogenation reaction, because bromide is so selective, it will always abstract the H atom that will lead to the more stabilizing, more stabilized radical intermediate.